My name is Victoria Sherry. I'm an oncology nurse practitioner at the Abramson Cancer Center at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania Medical Center located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I specialize in thoracic oncology. The use of standard of care concurrent chemoradiation as recommended by clinical guidelines can optimize outcomes and give patients without disease progression the opportunity to receive guideline recommended immunotherapy. It's important to manage adverse events proactively for patients who are receiving concurrent chemoradiation because we know that chemotherapy sensitizes the radiation and can add to the acuity of the toxicity. So proactive management can actually mitigate those adverse events, which is key, because research has shown that patients who have missed doses of chemotherapy actually have a higher mortality rate. It's really important to proactively treat adverse events related to concurrent chemoradiation in order to mitigate these side effects. My big three that I always discuss with my patients are hydration, nutrition, and fatigue. Hydration is critical for getting patients through chemoradiation therapy. When a patient's not properly hydrated during treatment, it can make them feel pretty lousy. They can have headaches, um, nausea, fatigue, and just overall not feeling well. You want to monitor their frequency of urination. We're checking blood work and OCOMP to check for their, their electrolytes to make sure that they're being well hydrated and their kidney function. You want to educate your patients to drink about 64 ounces of fluid a day. That includes non-alcoholic, non-caffeinated fluid, such as Gatorade, electrolyte water, water. They can drink caffeine and alcohol in moderation, but it can't be included in their 64 ounces as it will dehydrate them and have the opposite effect. If the patients aren't able to get oral fluids in, we could actually give them IV fluids, which we tend to do quite frequently. The patients are here every single day getting radiation anyway, so we'll just bring them in and they'll stay you know, an extra hour or two and we'll give them some IV fluids through their portacath or an intravenous line. I will tell my patients to front load some of their fluids because a lot of them will complain that they're up all night urinating. And it's not a bad thing, but they're not getting any sleep. So ask your patients to just front load some of their fluids and maybe stop drinking after 6 or 7 p.m. so they can get the rest. Ensuring proper nutrition throughout concurrent chemoradiation leads to better outcomes for patients. So making sure that they don't lose weight, lose muscle mass, is really key throughout treatment. And as nurses, we can do this by monitor their, monitoring their weight, um, checking in on their eating, make sure that they're eating. These patients aren't gonna be eating three big meals a day. You're gonna encourage them to eat small frequent meals throughout the day, high protein meals. If you have access to a nutritionist at your facility, absolutely consult your nutritionists. They play a key role in helping your patients maintain adequate nutrition and adequate caloric intake. The chemo and radiation, especially the radiation, may cause esophagitis, which is where nutrition is really key. And usually the side effects from chemo and radiation don't kick in for about two weeks after they begin therapy. So for those first two weeks, I encourage my patients to eat and drink as much as they can, to pack on the calories up front so that when they do start to get esophagitis and they can't eat and drink as much, they do have a little bit of wiggle room to lose some weight. Some tips if patients are losing weight, we could tell them to add heavy cream. So they should be on a full fat. They should not be on anything light, anything skim. They should be eating full calorie, high calorie, high protein shakes and meals. You can recommend drinks such as Boost and Ensure, and I actually tell the patients to put in a few tablespoons of heavy cream in that, also to add in some whey protein into that. But get as much as you can, because there's small windows where the patients feel okay to drink and eat, and that's when you wanna get as much in as you can. Also, I think it's important to remind caregivers that patients' tastes will change from day to day. So they may want meatballs one day, and you make a whole batch of meatballs, and they come home and they don't want meatballs. They'd like something else. So my patients joke around that there's a lot of wasted food that goes on. I always tell them to freeze it for later. They will feel better eventually, and they will be able to eat it all. But it can be very frustrating for the caregivers because they're constantly making new foods, and they think they have it that the patient would like meatloaf every single night because they liked it one night and that's not the case. Concurrent chemo radiation can cause fatigue that can lead to deconditioning. 
Um, fatigue is important to manage because it can lead to a lack of patient compliance. And I feel that of all of the adverse events that patients go through, I feel like fatigue is the toughest one for them to accept. It's very difficult to treat and really the onus falls on them. Two specialties that you can consult that are really important to helping these patients get through are physical therapy and nutritionists. If patients are really struggling with fatigue, you can also institute medications such as low-dose dexamethasone at two milligrams daily. Remind them not to take it on an empty stomach and take it first thing in the morning. But this can sometimes help boost their energy, um, boost their appetite, and help them get through these rough you know, six to eight weeks that they have. We usually reserve that at the very end if they're not able to really exercise and get their stamina up. It's also important to set expectations with your patients, letting them know that they will experience fatigue and it will or may be quite debilitating to them, but really it's for a very short window of time. It's about six to eight weeks. And if they can get through this and we help them get through this, they will have better outcomes. Really the only studies that have shown any efficacy is exercise. So telling your patients to exercise about 20 minutes every day will help them improve their fatigue level or their energy level. Doing things such as putting weights, little one pound weights on their ankles or their wrists and doing exercises that way can help improve their energy level. And remind your patients that when you're encouraging this activity, they're going to have to take frequent breaks. So if they normally walk, say a mile outside every day, they may be able to walk a quarter mile and then take a break and then another quarter mile and then take a break. And again, this can be frustrating for someone who is maybe used to even running one or two miles a day. Patients may take naps, but my rule of thumb is that they can take one one-hour cat nap a day. Otherwise, it really disrupts their sleep-wake cycle, which you get into a whole different issue then. If they are sleeping in bed more than 50% of the day, this is an issue and you need to call the office. I tell them how important it is to stay on treatment as much as they can. And I, I think the key thing here is that they know that I'm on their team and that I'm here to support them to get them through the treatment. They can't do this alone and they don't want to do it alone. And they have their radiation oncologist and they have their medical oncologist and they have their nurse practitioner and they have the nutritionist and physical therapy and we have so many resources for them. We can get them through this.